Good morning, church. We're glad that you have joined us today. We want to begin this Palm Sunday by praying out to our God, our Lord and our Savior. Jesus, this morning, may you be glorified. May you be lifted up. May you be uh, praised with, Lord, uh, every bit of praise that we can muster today, for this is the day that we commemorate your entry into Jerusalem as the rightful king of not just the Jews and not just Palestine, Lord, but the world. For you are our king, Jew and Gentile alike. You make no distinction between us. And so, God, all voices that follow you around the world today are giving you praise. Even though we cannot be uh, present in this place, we know that your Holy Spirit is present with us wherever we are gathered. And so, God, we ask that, um, that we would not forget the purpose of this occasion and that is to tell you that you are holy to submit to you in our hearts Lord and, and to, uh, to give you the glory that you are due so we ask yes. this morning Lord that you would be lifted up yes. lifted up high Lord may we set all other things aside and just give you praise for who you are yes. for it is in a wonderful magnificent name of Jesus we pray all of these things together and the church wherever you're at said Amen. Amen. Let's begin with praise this morning.
when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, in your presence, all our fears are washed away, are washed away. Mark chapter 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples saying, ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. And they found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. And as they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father, David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. This morning we sing to our king. The one who has come to uh, inherit the throne of David and the one who now sits at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. Thank you, God. We ascribe to him glory and power and honor in all ways. Let's continue to give him praise this morning.
you are good. I do want to welcome you here this morning, no matter uh, what way uh, you have chosen to worship with us today. We have our small praise team, and of course, we've got uh, my brother Bob McCabe, who's here worshiping with us uh, this morning, who will be bringing us this message. It is a special day, and in a day where he is worthy of praise, whether you are watching online, perhaps you're on our website at lgcnas.com. Uh, you could be watching on Facebook Live, where you can leave live comments, or uh, I know we have a a decent assortment of people currently outside in our parking lot engaging in uh, our drive-in worship service this morning. I want to welcome those who are uh, outside right now uh, in our parking lot. In fact, you know what, what's going to be kind of funny is I'm going to ask you in just a moment to honk uh, just to let us know that you are out there. But it is about a minute delay from the time that we recorded in here, from the time you hear it out there. So by the time I ask you to honk, uh, we're already going to be doing something else. But I'm just going to ask you to do it anyway. If you just want to honk to say that you are here, that you are praising the Lord, we would love to hear that inside. And so we'll wait for that honk a little bit. You'll probably hear it right in the middle of announcements. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, we're so glad that you are out there as well and uh, that you have chosen to, uh, to join us um, as close to in person as possible while maintaining your social distance. Uh, I did also want to give you an announcement this morning. If you are watching online, you're not uh, part of our regular crew or you have no other way to do so, we have added this morning. This is normally a time where we would, we would take our tithes and our offerings. Um, and so we've had several people that have been mailing their tithes in. 
and uh, we really appreciate you for that, uh, maintaining faithful tithe. There, there we are. There's the horns. <laughs> That's fantastic. We love you guys out there. Um, those who have uh, not had the ability to send in tithes and offerings, but you want to, or maybe you're just watching our stream today and you want to support, we have added an option on our website right now where you can give online. Uh, One-time donations, you can set up regular giving uh, if you want to. It's at lgcnas.com. There's a, a section right at the top. Uh, where you can give online, you can set up an account, and uh, so we're, we're trying to make sure that we're maintaining faithful tithe and offering giving uh, as we are here, and uh, also one other thing that I want to tell you, we've got some things up our sleeve for this Easter uh, that I think will be enjoyable. Stay tuned to Facebook or uh, uh, be on the lookout for uh, an automated call from our church with some information on that, but Easter is going to be special. We're going to make sure it's still a special day at the best that we can make it, and so uh, uh, we're looking forward to that, and I hope that you can join us on Easter as well. Uh, we're going to make it a big push into our community uh, to let them know that just because the building is closed, it doesn't mean that Jesus isn't risen from the dead. And so we've got, uh, we've got some, some great news ahead of us here. Uh, yes, uh, the, actually, my wife just reminded me in, in the flurry of all the other things. We are going to be taking communion today. And so that means one thing. If you are at home, if you have any semblance of juice and bread... Uh, prepare yourself some communion elements because we're going to do that near the end of our worship time here, uh, our praise time. And uh, if you are out in our parking lot right now, we set up a table uh, with individual communion elements uh, wrapped up in little white plastic bags. If you have not uh, grabbed one from the table, uh, we ask that you would just drive by it, pick it up. Uh, make sure you don't touch any of the other bags out there. They were painstakingly cleanly given <laughs> and prepared, and so we want to make sure that everyone is, is uh, keeping everyone else um, as safe as possible. But there are communion, communion elements out on the table outside, right next to the sign that gave you the frequency to tune in. Uh, we want to take communion together here in the next few minutes, and uh, anyone that, that can, we would love to join with us. And so, uh, um, boy, again, uh, what a wonderful day to worship. I'm going to grab my scripture here. Again. I'm going to go back into the gospel of Mark. Because today is not just a day that we celebrate the one who is our king, it's a day that we begin to remember the reason he came into Jerusalem uh, in the first place. And so uh, I want to read this scripture from Mark chapter 15, starting with verse 33. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lima sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, Listen, he's calling Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with wine and vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. And then with a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, Surely this man was the Son of God. Some women were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, the younger, and of Joseph. And Salome. In Galilee, these women had followed him and cared for his needs, and many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were also there. This is a day that we remember that Jesus came for a very specific purpose. Many thought he was coming to establish a military kingdom, that he was coming to conquer Rome. And his kingdom is like no other, it is a kingdom that is sown with his blood. And so today, we give him all the praise, not just for his kingship, but also for what he has given. Jesus, we love you. We praise you that you would choose to carry the cross for us. The weight of the crucifixion and the weight of our sin. Today, we remember what you've done for us. And again, we give you glory. Yes. Amen. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering. 
And so we remember on this occasion when Jesus gave his life that he was already preparing his disciples for what was to come when he shared his last supper with them as they gathered together in the upper room. As a symbol of what was to come, he took the bread as they were gathered around for the Passover meal. He took it and he broke it. He said, take and eat this in remembrance of me. And so, Lord, we do remember that you gave up your body, which was beaten and whipped and 
bruised beyond all recognition, Lord. You sacrificed yourself, gave your life so that we could have it. Just the same, after you'd broken the bread, you lifted the cup, and looked again at your disciples and said that this is the blood of my new covenant. Take and drink this in remembrance of me. And so, Lord, we are thankful that we're no longer bound to the old law, which, which Lord, honestly would condemn us all. Instead, you freely pardoned us in your grace, in the precious power of your blood. For now, not only are we cleansed of our sin, but in the power of that cleansing blood and in the power of your resurrection to come, we have freedom. Thank you again for choosing to bear what you bore on our behalf. We remember that today and on so many days. You didn't hold back from us. You are our God, our Lord, our Savior. Lord, be glorified in this last song that we sing. Thank you for being our Savior. Amen. Above all 
thank you again for what you've done, Jesus. And now we ask that your Holy Spirit would be present in this place as your word is read from, Lord, and as your speaker speaks, uh, not just from, uh, Lord, what he has brought, but from what your Holy Spirit has prepared for us today. Bless this time. Make it your time, God, as we submit our hearts and our minds and our ears to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now at this time, I'm going to welcome up my brother Bob McKay, who's going to bring the word to you. First of all, let's say good morning to, to you, Grace community, to my family, to friends, to the world. Uh, this is a unique situation that we're in right now as a church, and I'm sitting here in a church with empty pews, and it brings me back to the days of college when I was learning how to preach. I would go over to the sanctuary at John Wesley College, and I would go into the sanctuary and I would preach, preach to empty pews, and just just learning how to preach. And so I knew an empty pew couldn't tell me if it was good or bad. So I could so I could practice. But I know we all want to gather at some point, but we are gathering. We're gathering in our homes. We're gathering with our family. We're gathering through the internet. We're gathering, but most of all, we're gathering with Jesus wherever we're at. And that's the best part about it is Jesus is mobile. That's why he went to the cross. That's why he rose on the third day to become mobile for us. And so we can be anywhere, in any place, and at any time and walk with Jesus and talk with Jesus. So on this Palm Sunday, there's going to be a lot of messages today on Palm Sunday. So we're going to look at Palm Sunday, but we're going to look at it a little bit differently. And we're going to look at how Palm Sunday is really coming alive this week, today, and how Easter's coming and how it's really tying into what's going on with the world today. Because as we know, every, every day is getting different with this virus um, hindering the world. And so this week, is, they're saying it's going to get even more difficult. But I believe Easter Sunday. I believe Easter Sunday, as all the pastors get ready for their Easter messages and doing all these things, I believe God's going to do a great thing on Easter Sunday and all of your houses all the job sites, all wherever you work, whatever you're doing, God's going to show up in a mighty way, and I believe he's going to give us a big old hug. And he's just going to say, I love you. And this is going to be the greatest hug we will ever receive. It's because the whole world needs it, wouldn't it? The whole world needs a hug right now. And the only one that's big enough and capable of doing that is Jesus Christ. So it's going to be a great day. So on this Palm Sunday, for all of you that's in the car, I want you to sit up tall in your seat, in your car. And if you're at home, this may be seem a little weird, but I want you to stand with me. I'm not going to stand very long. I want you to stand with me. Because Palm Sunday is about honor. 
Because what did the people, when Jesus come in, what did the people do? They honored him. He said, look, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords is here. So I just want us to take 30 seconds. I want you to put your palms to the sky. Take 30 seconds of your own time. I'm going to get quiet here. I just want you to honor him. Honor him with your words and thank him for everything that he's done for you. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for being king. Lord, you're the king. Lord, you're our Father. We adore you. We praise you. So why did we just do that? Why did we just stop and honor him? Because Jesus told us to do that in the Lord's Prayer. Because the disciples asked him, how do we pray? And he said, first thing you need to do, you need to honor him. Honor the Father. Hallowed be your name. So every day, through crisis, through great times, we're called to honor Him. Why do we need to honor Him? Because tomorrow is coming. We need to be ready for tomorrow by getting ready for today. For the first time in a long time, we will, as Christians, live the true meaning of Easter this week. And it's going to be a battle for the soul. What do I mean by that? If there's Jesus... There's Satan. Let me say it again. If there's Jesus, which there is, and all God's people honked our horns and said amen, right? But then there's Satan. And so there's two ways that we, we, can, we can look at this week. We can let Jesus win, or we can let Satan tempt us to say no to the good things that Jesus wants to give us. We will see this week the battle for the soul. Jesus wants your soul. Amen, right? He wants your soul. But guess what? Satan wants your soul as well. He wants your soul. So there's always a battle. Every day of every week, 365 days a year is a battle. It's a battle. Jesus right now, right now as I speak, is chasing non-believers. Right now he's chasing him and he's saying this, I'll take care of you. I can help. I can give you comfort. I can give you peace in the storm. I truly love you. Please, please let me in. This is what he's saying to the unbelievers, to the ones that are home hurting right now. Wondering about life right now. Jesus is chasing after them. Praise God. Yes. But guess what? Here's what Satan is telling non-believers right now. You are strong. You are healthy. You've seen this before. Just keep being you. Because how, how Satan wants your soul is he wants you to be selfish. He wants you to think it's just all about yourself. And the last thing he wants to, he's telling unbelievers is, God is the problem, not you. So you see how there's two different battles here. Because both parties know how important it is to have a connection to people. Because if Jesus can change a life, he changes the world. If, if the devil changes a life, it destroys the world. So Jesus is telling you Christians right now, I am with you. And I will not leave you. Amen. Isn't that a good word? I'm with you. And we're going to read it here in a moment in Romans, but I'll read a quick verse out of Romans 8, 37. And it says this at the end, overwhelmingly victory is ours through Christ who loved us. Overwhelmingly victory. Meaning this, all things may fall apart in the world, but my soul does not have to fall apart. Yeah. Because Jesus reached down, 
reach down in your guys' lives and save that heart and turned it to be pure and holy. And now you're connected to the Father. And so when all the wind and stuff blows, it doesn't matter. I could get the virus next week and be gone the week after, and it's okay. Why? Because I got a relationship with Jesus Christ. But the opposite is, I may live and never get sick, and God is calling me to change lives. So no matter what, we can't give up. We've got to keep going because there's something in us that gives us the power to be that overwhelming presence in people's lives, to let them see the victory. But the opposite of that is Satan is telling you Christians right now, curse God. Curse him. Just stop. And Scripture gives us a warning. Proverbs 20, 20, Whoever curses his father or his mother, his lamp will be put out in deep darkness. So if we say Jesus is the father, he's my father, if I curse the father, what's going to happen to my light in my life? It's going to dim. And people are going to say, what happened to that guy? He used to be this, he used to be this, and well, life must have got to him. He must have not been praying, he must have not been living the word out, he must have not been reading, he must have not been doing them things. That can happen to anybody. If we stop living the faith, I've, I've been thinking about March 8th. March 8th, I cannot get away from March 8th. March 8th was our last normal Sunday. Yeah. It was our last normal Sunday. And so think about March 8th, there was people that woke up he said, oh, my, my, my arm hurts. I'm going to stay home. I'll go to church next week. We got some that went on vacation, and they didn't go nowhere that Sunday when they went on vacation. They just said, well, we, we'll go next week. But some of us came, right? We came, went to church, and, and we didn't know that this is going to be the last time we would join together for a while. So what's church going to look like when we come back? Don't know. But I hope we're closer. I hope we're stronger. And I hope we're even more mobile. Yeah. Because does really, does Sunday morning need to change in the life of the church? No, it doesn't. But Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, <laughs> Thursday, Friday, and Saturday better. Do you hear that church? Let's, let's just do this again. We can get back, and Daniel can do the same old stuff on Sunday morning, and it's going to be okay. Give me a honk for an amen. I'll get that here in a minute, right? <laughs> and it's going to be all right. But what Jesus is showing us, I am mobile. We are mobile. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, let me use you. Let's be the church. Then we come back on Sunday mornings, we're bringing people with us that want Jesus, want to get saved, want more of what we got. Instead of us hoping one day, well, somebody's going to show up, let's go, let's go be the church. Let's be it. Why? Because we got that overwhelming victory. We win the war. So what am I getting at here? Matthew 16. When you guys, when I preached here a couple months ago, I talked to you about how I, I spent a year in the Lord's Prayer. And ever since then, everything I, I do comes back to the Lord's Prayer. And so as I thought about Palm Sunday, what happens all this week, and looking at what Jesus told us to pray, Jesus told us to pray this at the end. And do not, Matthew 6, 13, and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. And so we just, I just gave you the battle scene, right, of what Jesus is trying to tell non-believers and, and Christians and what Satan is trying to tell non-believers and Christians. And so do you see why that's important to pray that prayer? Because we honor him. We want his kingdom to come. Lord, give us that daily bread. And a lot of us need that daily bread right now, food and spiritual help. But then he says, deliver us. Do not Lead me down to temptation. And so I want to be on Jesus' side. I don't want to be on the devil's side. 
And so as we pray this prayer, let's think about it. Let's think about it. Jesus told him this right off the bat in the Sermon on the Mount, the beginning of his ministry. So three years he's been showing him how to pray and how to walk. Now we come to a hard time, a hard time. And what happens? Jesus gives Peter a chance and says, Peter, you're going to deny me three times. And Peter says, no, I'm not. But Peter could have took, took them words and applied it and said, I got to make sure I don't, right? I better get to the side. I better spend time with God. God, help me not leave your son. He gave him that chance. You ever thought about that? He, he told him. So was Jesus trying to help him not make that decision? Because that third time when the rooster crowed, wherever Jesus was at and wherever Peter was at, when he crowed, Jesus found him. It says they, come, they met eye to eye. Whew. Imagine how powerful that was. You know how you can find your mom or your dad when you make a mistake? No matter where you're at, and they just, whoop, told you, son. Told you, my child. So we have Peter who, who, who denies him because it got hard. Life got hard. And then we got Judas who turned him in. So it was a temptation to turn away from, from the Father. So during this difficult time, during this next week, during these next couple of weeks, when it gets harder for the world, the church has got to rise up. It's got to, because temptation is going to come over here from the world, because the devil's going to pour into them. You're strong. You do it. You take care of this. You tear down these things. Stop listening to these other people. And it can destroy lives. But we as Christians got to be that example to say, listen. Listen. Be the ones that you need to be. Why? Because we're for each other. So you can look at this. This Palm Sunday is also the great temptation. Because of, I mean, after Sunday, after he go, comes in Jerusalem, it was no fun the rest of the week. No. It was no fun. The Sadducees, Pharisees say, after he walks in, says, who do you think you are walking in here like this? And then Jesus says, all right. He goes to the temple and says, what do you think you're doing by stealing people's money? Clears the temple out, right? Yeah. So he just starts doing all these different things and and, and then he takes that sweet moment to stop, stops to pray in the chaos, gets, gets the people up in the upper room, says, hey, here's my blood. Here's my body. It was probably the last time Jesus ate, period, yeah. before the crucifixion. The last time he had a meal with him was when he was saying, I'm dying. I'm dying for you. But then it comes right back. The chaos of life. And through it all, Jesus made the right decisions. Through it all, we can make the right decisions. Yeah. By, saying, by saying, Lord, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from the evil one. So I want to leave you with, with some encouraging, with an encouraging passage about being a Christian. About dealing with life, dealing with this crisis that we're facing right now. And it's in Romans 8, 31. And I'm reading from New Living's translation and a little bit of New King James. And you're going to see why here in a second. But Romans 8, 31 says this. What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? I want to stop there before we go on. And I want to tell you what these things are, okay? If you read, if you're feeling discouraged, if you're feeling down right now, read Romans 8. Here's how Romans 8, verse 18 says, and this is what Paul was just talking about before we get to 31. For, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Romans is the last book that, that Paul wrote. So he's looking back at his life and saying, man, nothing... Anything that I went through, this is nothing compared to what the glory is going to be revealed in me and in you. So church, this virus is going to be stamped on our church history. And there's going to be some great things come from this. Because we are that overwhelming 
victory. We got the victory. Jump down to 26. This is a good one for you. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness. Praise God, right? Again, that's the Holy Spirit in us. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weakness. Verse 28, we all know this scripture. And we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. Sometimes it's hard to hear good things in the storm. And sometimes we want to get together and mope around and say, Oh, woe is me. And sometimes it's hard to see the good in the moment. But it, and that's okay because guess what? In our weakness, it says the Spirit will help us. So the Spirit's going to get us through there to get us to 31. And so Paul gets us there. What shall we say about these such wonderful things as these? The suffering is not going to get me. The Spirit's going to help me. All good things happen. Good things are going to happen. Why? Because it says if God is for us, who can be against us? Woo! Right? If God is for us, who can be against us? Since he did not spare even his own son, he let his son go to the cross. He let his son get beaten, battered, and bruised, but gave him up for us all. He did it for you. He did it for that lost person that's driving down the street right now. They don't care about Palm Sunday. Don't care. He did it for them. Because Jesus is right now chasing that car down the road and saying, I love you and I care for you. Who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? They can accuse me and they can accuse you Christians all day long, but guess what? They can't take away the Jesus that's in your soul. Ooh, that's good. No one, for God himself has given us the right standing with him himself. We have a right to stand with him. Why? Because we've been washed clean by his blood. We've been set free so we can stand with our chest out and our hands up and say, Lord, we honor you. We love you. We live for you. Who then will condemn us? No one. For Christ Jesus has died for us and was raised to life for us and is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand pleading for us. Ooh, is that good? That he's sitting at the right hand of the Father pleading for the world right now. The whole world is looking for hope. And Jesus is saying, I'm the guy. I'm the guy that can give you the hope. I'm pleading for this to go. Keep praying, church. Keep praying, believers. I'm doing, I'm, we're, we're doing it together. I'm pleading for you. And for the unbelievers out there, Jesus is pleading for them. He's saying, I care for you. I love you. I want to be there for you. Man, Palm Sunday looks a lot different now, doesn't it? Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? And this is, man, this just gets real for us right here in this passage. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? And this is crucial for us to see because we're in this world to, with non-believers. We're in it together. And so here's what he's saying. He said, if you love me, here's what's going to happen. Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? Are we right there today? Does that not that sound like right now in this world? It absolutely does. So verse 36, as the scripture says, for your sake we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. So here's the answer Paul gives us. No. Praise God. Right? No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. So we're going to go through these things. We're going to be hungry. We're going to be destitute. We're going to have trouble. But it doesn't separate us from the love of Christ. The love of Christ gets us through. One way or another, through life or through death, we are with Christ. Man, I saw it yesterday. I saw the stats yesterday. In New York alone, there was 650 deaths in one day from the coronavirus. One day in one little area, that many deaths. And so the question is, out of them people, and it's hard to talk about, are they, did they go to heaven? Did they meet Jesus? That's a hard question to talk about in right now, isn't it? 
Because we want everybody to have fellowship with Jesus. We want everybody to go to heaven. But the word says, you have to love me. You have to say, Lord, forgive me. I'm a sinner. Come into my life and, and change my life. And, and so we're not strong, right? The enemy's lying to the, to the world saying you're strong. You're not strong. You're not God. So what's the goal? What's the goal here? If we go to Galatians, it tells us to, to love people into the kingdom. It tells us to be gentle and humble. So that's how we got to imagine all the gentleness that you got to have in the hospitals right now. And hard discussions you got to have with people and, and, and say, look, we don't know if we're going to get through this right now. Are you, do you feel like you're good with Jesus Christ? But before that, we got to have these conversations before we get to the hospital. we got to have these conversations with, with people around us because for all of us, death is coming one day. Why not be ready and love Jesus and follow him and enjoy him? So when death comes, it's an overwhelming victory in your life. It's a victory celebration. Verse 38, and I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Here it comes. Neither life, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today, hmm, nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. Man, isn't that a good word? Isn't that a good word for us as Christians? Say nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing. Because right now it's being challenged, right? Think about it. Everything in your life is getting pulled away. Right now, everything else, right? Life, hobbies, work is getting pulled away where you're home. You're stuck at home, right? You're at home. But guess who's with you as you're stuck at home? Jesus. Because the world, the government, nobody can separate you from your relationship with Jesus Christ. No power in the sky, above, or on earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Jesus Christ, our Lord. So Jesus had a difficult week for you. And so this week's going to be difficult for us, for the world. But there's something coming. And I'm excited about Easter Sunday this Sunday, because I believe some, this Easter Sunday is going to be a celebration of life. He's the one that gives us the true life. And we as Christians got to be that life. And so after Easter Sunday is over, it's not going backwards on Monday. It's building upon that. And saying, we as Christians are going to be here for the world. We're going to be here to give. We're going to be here to love. We're going to be here to help. We're going to be there to cry with you. We're not going anywhere because we got the victory and we're called to pass it along. And that gets us back to the Palm Sunday. That gets the lost people to stop in our So whatever we go through, it's worth it. It's worth having empty pews right now. Because the kingdom is growing. So one day we gather back, the kingdom just keeps growing. Amen? Amen. You can come on up, Daniel. So we're, I want to close in prayer. I'm just going to close in prayer with the Lord's Prayer. Because sometimes the Lord gave us this because... To help us to understand that we don't got to make prayer complicated. And that the Lord's Prayer is simply a prayer of application. Living the life that you're supposed to live. It cover, covers every aspect of your life. And so, so you can close your eyes and just listen to the Lord as, as we go through these verses of the prayer. But our Father in heaven, hallowed 
Blessed be your name. Lord, we know your kingdom has come. We want your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, give us this day our daily bread. Lord, give us the food. Give us the spiritual food that we need every day during, these, during this season. Lord, help us as we... Help us to forgive us our debts. And so, Lord, help us. Lord, forgive us. Look at our hearts. Lord, help us to be honest to give you things. Because, Lord, we need to make things right with people around us. And so, Lord, help us to forgive our debtors. So, Lord, as we feel and accept your forgiveness, Lord, you're going to give us the power and strength to pass it on. lead us into temptation. Lord, help us not to give up on you. Help us to not listen to the devil. Help us to focus on you and listen to you. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Lord, help us to be the light unto your feet. Why, Lord? Because for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. All God's people honk their horns. All God's people clap their hands. All God's people shout in their homes that God is in control. We love you. We adore you. We know that you're going to help us and care for us. But we thank you that you're chasing down lost people. You're chasing after the one saying, I love you. But we thank you that you got this. You got this. And we honor you for that. We are nothing without you. And all God's people say, Amen. <laughs> are right on cue, aren't they? Church, you are loved. Not just by your pastor. And not just by your other church family, but the Lord loves you with all of his heart. That's what this week is about. That he would do anything for his people. And so go in that love today. Know that you were surrounded in his his grace and his mercy, which is limitless. So go in grace and peace. Have a wonderful Sunday. You are dismissed.